to movie nights, folks. Land of the inconsistent hair. I'm here with my final Halloween video of the season. Last week, I talked about Psycho 2, a movie I feel has been unfairly lampooned. But this week, I'm going to be talking about a movie where the lampooning was entirely necessary. It's Bates Motel. Now, you might be familiar with the 2013 TV series Bates Motel, which just wrapped up this year. I haven't seen it myself, but apparently it's gotten great reviews and been nominated for three Emmys. But what you might not know is that this wasn't the first attempt at making a Psycho TV series, because in 1987, there was another Bates Motel. Psycho 3 had just been released the year before, and because it was the lowest grossing installment of the franchise, Universal was looking to expand on the Psycho name in other venues. Thus, they decided to develop a TV series. And hey, if the 2013 version proved anything, Norman had a story that could definitely be elaborated. This show would have had nothing to do with Norman Bates. Bates Motel is a pilot movie, and as you might have guessed, it was not picked up. It was intended to be an anthology series, and believe me, that's the least baffling part about all of it. While fellow horror icon Freddy Krueger would have more success with his own anthology the following year, Psycho did not have quite the same fate. And Freddy's Nightmares is one of the worst television shows I've ever watched. So thanks for paving the way for that one, Norman! Hope he didn't bite off more than he can chew. Bates Motel centers on Alex West, played by Bud Cord of Harold and Maude fame, a young man who meets Norman Bates in the asylum and inherits the motel after his death. So Norman Bates is not only irrelevant, he's dead! As you probably gathered, this ignores all of the Psycho sequels. But don't worry, they still had Psycho 4 coming. Despite rumors Anthony Perkins boycotted the film, he said he had no involvement with it. Although, it is worth noting he did say he watched it and said it was just terrible. Also, hilariously, Bud Court called him up to ask how to prepare for the movie, and Perkins just told him to do a lot of push-ups. If you're gonna play a psycho who kills people and has severe parental issues, you gotta be ripped. The idea of the series was that each story would focus on guests at the motel, which sounds simple enough, but wait until I get into that. Tying it all together is Alex and the people he's hired to help him run the place, including Lori Petty. This was one of her early roles, and apparently the one that helped her shape her usual persona playing quirky misfits. There are a handful of other recognizable people doing guest spots here, including Robert Picardo and Jason Bateman. This was written and directed by Richard Rothstein, who created and produced another anthology show called The Hitchhiker. This was in the middle of its six-year run at the time, so I can see how Universal figured he was the right man for the job. But man, this movie is just a mess. A real doozy. Let's start with Alex. He ends up at the same institution as Norman because he killed his abusive stepfather. So it's kind of like Norman's story, except without all the interesting parts. Check out this bit of cartoon villainry. How about interests? Hobbies, friends? Well, just Jack. Jack? His pet bird, until he returned home from school one day to find it dead. The stepfather? Handed him a shovel and ordered him to bury it. Instead, he secretly stuffed it. Wait, what? Okay, but why did they let him keep his taxidermy bird friend, and why didn't Dr. Robert Picardo ask about it before now? But as you will see, he's not a very good doctor. Coming to the conclusion he needs a real friend that isn't perhaps a corpse, he pairs him up with Norman Bates. Cause yeah, sure, the best influence on the kid who killed a parental figure is the guy most famous for killing his parental figure and also is twice his age and shares nothing else in common. Norman becomes a father figure for Alex, because these two definitely don't have parental issues! And so it goes for 27 years, where they take a lot of embarrassing pictures. They doing a lot of peace protests in the asylum, are they? Until Norman's death of unspecified causes. Yeah, I'm sure that won't affect the kid who killed his stepfather! If there is no one who wishes to say a few words, I will uh, <clears throat> conclude with a final prayer. I do. Uh, I'll try and keep it short. We do a volume business here. I am trying to judge this on its own merits, but it's hard not to compare. Psycho 2 successfully made you believe in Norman Bates' redemption and subsequent downfall. Here we have Alex giving a tearful speech about Norman's goodness and light or whatever, and everything just rings so incredibly hollow. 
because it is hatred that is the enemy. And it doesn't make us feel any better. It just, just eats us up inside. We don't follow your own business here. One of the things that makes the Psycho series so compelling to me is the subtle nuances. Many of the best moments are understated and open to interpretation. And you ain't getting that here. Norman Bates was brought to justice. And so ends the most terrible and bizarre chapter in the history of this picture book town. Uh, Everyone acts like an asshole for no reason. They're just a bunch of reform murderer bullies. I, Norman Bates, being of sound mind. Anyway, Alex is bequeathed the Bates Motel and meets Henry Watson, who used to do odd jobs at the place when Norman was a little boy and played catch with him. Dude's Norman same age. Alex also encounters Willie, a down-on-her-luck squatter who's been using the motel as her home. <sighs> Just got the shivers. Felt like someone was walking over the grave of a respectable horror franchise. Saying their lines really badly. Well, someone makes a fucking blinking sound outside! Who's this Norman Bates character? Okay, it's called the Bates Motel. Can't you just see the series potential? Lori Petty bullying him and having crazy mood swings week after week? It's always a great time here. Hmm, that's good. It's good? <laughs> what, you think you could be like a little more enthusiastic? <laughs> How about like, very good? Was that gonna kill you? You'll see some subtle nods to the original film here if you really pay attention. Take note that Alex uses the same room Marion Crane did in her infamous shower death. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Haunting, isn't it? Did you ever want to see such interesting things as Alex getting a bank loan? This movie felt we did. Alex has found himself inheriting a prime piece of real estate, they say unironically. Yes, the Bates Motel, the out in the middle of nowhere dump next to the swamp that rarely has any guests, is a prime piece of real estate. I've been open for three hours, not one customer. Tell me about it. I've counted 47 cars go by, not even an almost. No, not on a prime piece of real estate like this former grisly murder scene. The first hour of the movie is insufferably pedestrian. You're just watching a film about starting up a motel. Alex gets a loan, hires some people on, and fixes up the place. Paperwork, the most terrifying part of it all. I don't understand any of this. It's like their only takeaway from Psycho was the motel part of it. Yay, Yay we're an upstart business. Okay. So, I could definitely envision a psycho anthology that focuses on a new guest every week. It's not the most imaginative premise, but I understand the pitch. What I don't get is all of the random supernatural elements they decided to add. I mean, Norman Bates was just a dude. It's not like Freddy or Jason or even Michael where there's some level of mysticism involved. He was just mentally ill and stabbed people with a butcher knife. I mean, the history of the Bates Motel is known to everyone at this point, but apparently that's not the big issue they have. The murders? Alright. But guess what? This place is haunted! People around here believe it's haunted. They believe Mrs. Bates still lives in that house, and that she roams the grounds every night. Really now? They think the ghost of Mrs. Bates roams the grounds at night? Not Norman Bates, the one who actually committed all of the murders and just died? Thus begins, arguably, the movie's main plot. Is or isn't the Bates Motel haunted by the ghost of Mrs. Bates? You know how the Psycho series is all about Norman Bates' psychological trauma manifesting itself as the alternate personality of his mother, deeply rooted in his Oedipal complex that left him both the victim and the perpetrator, haunted by the memory of a woman long since dead but forever a part of him? Well, what if she was just a ghost? I don't think old Mrs. Bates is going to much like us digging up her tomato patch. Ghost! Ghost did it! You all saw it! Hey, if she was a ghost with magic powers, why didn't she, uh... 
kill people herself. Ooh, it's so spooky! Now, why was she buried in the front yard? When they found her body after they took Norman away, they just decided to throw her in the tomato patch? Well, the shockwave set off around here. Never found the body. What? She was right there in the basement when you caught him. As if that wasn't bad enough, they find another skeleton in the yard, which they identify as Norman's father by his Super Bowl ring. More on this mysterious development later. You want to hear about the anthology portion of this, don't ya? Structurally, I mean, this is a mess. They spent an hour on real estate. I don't know who's actually going to make it to the pitch part in the last stretch. Not bad, huh, Norman? Our first night? It isn't long before a group of partying teenagers arrive at the motel. One of the teens accidentally walks in on another guest who has arrived to kill herself and convinces her to come to their oddly themed 50s sock hop. This is reminding her of her days as Queen of the Hop, as mentioned in one of her suicide notes. She's had three failed marriages, no children, and feels she's wasted her life. At the party, she's introduced to Jason Bateman, a fellow aspiring writer, and they dance the night away. But when she rejects him for being too young, he takes it badly. She explains to him that he has his whole life ahead of him, and it isn't worth it to throw it all away. She could take the same advice herself, but it isn't quite enough. She's about to finish what she started when the girl who interrupted her comes back and tells her it's never too late to start over. And then she reveals the truth. She committed suicide 25 years ago. In fact, all of the teens committed suicide, and now they've returned to Earth as a warning to others. You know, like friendly suicide angels. And we've come here to tell you that it stinks. I don't know, you get to have sock hops and save people's lives doesn't seem that bad. If you listen closely, you might have heard the movie drop some subtle hints about this twist. Teen Angel, Teen Angel. I feel so cold and alone, like I was dead. You know the ghost didn't pay their bill, which sucks because Alex owes the bank 10 grand by the next day. You might be asking what any of this has to do with our main characters or with Psycho. The answer is nothing. It has nothing to do with anything. I mean, the hosts of this anthology weren't even involved with or aware of any of this. It's just a bunch of stuff that happened there. It's just a bunch of stuff that happened. I mean, you took away our one piece of connective tissue, and I'm just left wondering, like, why? You literally could have cut this out and not changed anything. Anyway, back to our main plot. I hope you enjoyed that single short preview of what the actual show is going to be about. Alex has been seeing Mrs. Bates and dead bodies and wonders if, I don't know, he's catching Norman's multiple personality disorder? But what's the real story? Is Mrs. Bates really haunting him? Leave my home! We do a volume business here. No, of course, it's a greedy baker who wants to scare him off the land and take it for himself. Y yeah, that's what they're really going with. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. What's the real crime? Murders or corporate greed? But hang on. Yeah, my land. She, her. It's Mrs. Bates. Thanks for your confession. Who cares if it was all a prank? We just saw that real ghosts exist in this universe. You can't have your cake and eat it too, Bates Motel. Oh, by the way, if you ever need a room, come on by. Can't say for sure what you'll find, but that is what makes the world go round. Pass. Bates Motel is just a big bunch of nothing. I do like the actors involved, but they're given very few moments to shine, and a lot of it is focused on real estate, which I feel wasn't really conducive for a Psycho sequel or an anthology series. I mean, what was it going to be about? Alex and company in the background while random things happen at the motel? Is the Bates Motel just frequented by spirits now because of the murders? Am I overthinking this? Was the spirit of Mrs. Bates protecting them the whole time? I suppose we'll thankfully never know. Can you imagine a world where this was picked up as a series? I'll leave you with that frightening thought. Happy Halloween, everyone! <laughs>